we all can see it is hitting and it's hitting very hard and it's in our backyard we just don't know it yet why I've heard information scientists have studied it um, and they've done more studying across uh, overseas in uh, Europe and they've done more to be aware of this uh, than our scientists have. Um, there's a big one sitting in Yellowstone's volcanic cavities. And brother, sister, if it blows, it's enough to darken the world with no sunlight for a whole year. The volcanic ash that many people will inhale, thousands will die. And the volcanic ash found in people's lungs will be like glass. There will be no survival apart from a miracle of the Holy Spirit, the love of God, the protection that is afforded to God's children who fear Him. The scripture says the angel of the Lord is counted and camped around about all that fear him. Listen, <clears throat> prophetic words are only for the purpose of warning and encouraging people to be ready for the inevitable. The inevitable is that this age will do a metamorphosis. The inevitable is that what we have taken for granted what we have refused to use as an opportunity to worship God with will be snatched from us, whatever it was. Freedom, provision, reputation, opportunities of employment, friendship, family, some people even their own lives. I never intend to make anyone sorry. I never intend to um, prove any point because the burden of proof concerning any issue is never on us. Jesus finished the work. The only work that made any sense in this earth is the work of reconciliation because it brought us back to the original work that God called us to and that work is to take care of the earth and manage it like God takes care of heaven. That's your position. That's my position. That's our position in the earth. And it's a glorious privilege. And on the other side of any trial, on the other side of any prophetic word that scares us out of our boots, is the reward of repentance and returning to God and seeing captivity once again overturned led into captivity by the reconciliation and the rescuing of Jesus who always saves the day. And he can save the day for you and for me right now. Psalm 91 talks about how blessed we are when we abide under his shadow. What is afforded to us. But listen to me now. When we spoke earlier about the prophetic utterance and the word of God and everyone's part in <clears throat> any judgment that hits the earth. You need to understand that even though you may be a Christian and even though you may be a believer, you have a responsibility to live out the full requirement that God lays on us. You have a responsibility to make sure that you are in right standing. And I want to talk to you about um, what I mentioned earlier about being in bondage. Here's where our bondage is. Our bondage is found Wherever we cannot create in our own imagination a freedom 
from everything that man has imposed on us. I want to say it one more time. Our bondage is found whenever we in our minds cannot create a place or find a place of freedom in our imagination from the things that man has imposed on us. In other words, if man has told you something that either makes you insecure, makes you afraid, makes you feel guilty, makes you feel ashamed, makes you feel that you're less than or makes you feel that God will not plead your cause and that God cannot help you and that the outcome of your circumstances and ultimately your life is dependent on something that they have control over and that they can speak into your life and impose on you or if the outcome of your circumstances in your life is based on something that you did wrong, some mistake that you made, some color or family that you were born into, some bad decisions that you made. If any of those things are creating a sense of fear, pessimism, and doubt in you, you are being controlled by man you are in prison by man and ultimately you are psychologically under the tyranny and oppression of Satan. And without that energy being checked in you, rebuked in you, fixed in you, all of us are subject to this, and something else recreated in you, that gives you your peace in the Word of God, you will go into judgment. Some people even go to heaven, but they go into death defeated because they never had the Word of the Lord consistently spoken into their lives, which gave them their sense of self-esteem, self gave them their sense of of victory and well-being and peace and gave them a promise for provision and ultimately reward in the next life. I urge you to not just make this a book that sits on your coffee table. Get into relationships, get into places Get into atmospheres and find time in your schedule to learn what is in this book. And when you learn what is in this book, even in its elementary stages, it will put you in touch with the prophetic. You will begin to hear God. You will not be moved by what the news is saying, even by what religious people are saying. And you certainly won't be moved by what the devil is saying. Because you were created to house God. To not only hear from him, but to have his essence and his life in you leading you by his Holy Spirit into all truth. You were created to have the power to speak to Katrina, Hurricane Susie, Tornado Timothy, and any other disaster that would come forth in this earth. Because Psalm 91 says, a thousand shall fall on your left, ten thousand on your right, or whichever way is written, but it won't come near you. But if you're hearing words from Satan instead of the word of the Lord, no telling what you experience.